So I'd like to um, go through exam two and show you how I solve the problems. So problem one is basically a problem of rotating coordinate systems. And there's two ways you can do this. You can do this through a, a tensor uh, operation and have a, a tensor rotation, or you can use more circle. And I, I chose to use uh, more circle because this is a very simple representation. This is a principal coordinate system. And it really is designed to make this problem uh, very simple and quick to solve. So let's look at problem one. Uh, here's what I did to solve it. Uh, in this principal orientation system, we have one stress at 100, we have one at minus 50, we have zero shear. That means that our entire uh, stress state is represented on, on this line uh, because we know, <clears throat> excuse me, because we know the uh, uh, center here. I mean, that's you know easily obtained from arithmetic. That's uh, h equals 25. And also our radius is easy to achieve. That's 75. So now we've got h and r. Uh, what's more, we're rotating this uh, 22.5 degrees, which means we're going to rotate this up, and two theta is equal to 22.5 times two equals 45 degrees. And yes, I, I intentionally made this problem uh, simple. <laughs> so this is going to be 45 degrees. Uh, that makes this triangle, well, that means that our, our uh, task here is to identify these points as well as that, which means we need to uh, be able to identify what this triangle is. If that's 45, we know that's 90, that makes this 45, which means we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, we know that if these sides are x, then this side is square root of 2x. We know that this square root of 2x is the radius. So we have that uh, x is equal to r over square root of 2 is equal to 75 over square root of 2 is equal to 53.03. OK. And then by, I guess, just simple arithmetic, we know that uh, stress here, which I guess I'm referring to that as uh, sigma 3, 3 is equal to uh, 25 plus 53.03, which uh, is equal to 78.03. This point, which I'm referring to as uh, sigma 1, 1, is equal to 25 minus 53.03, or sigma 1, 1 is equal to uh, minus 28.03 GPA, GPA, and this is simply x, so that is sigma 1, 3 is equal to 53.03 GPA. So that means that our 
stress state rotated is equal to minus 28.03, this is uh, 53.03, 53.03, and this is uh, 78.03. Which you know kind of makes sense if you if you look at it, uh, you know, one hundred diminishes to seventy eight, minus fifty diminishes toward uh, twenty minus twenty eight, and we have now a strain, uh, a shear strain or shear, sorry shear shear stress. Okay, let's move on to problem two, and I'll change colors here. Okay, so we have an isotropic material, a lame parameter of 25 gigapascal, and a bulk modulus of 100 gigapascal, and we want to determine the corresponding strain state. Great. Well, for this problem, I, I gave you uh, these two sets of equations. Uh, you can use either one. I am particularly fond of this one. After all, I you know, wrote it down. Uh, but, you know, in terms of grades, they're, they're both uh, acceptable answers. So, problem two, uh, we have E1 or epsilon 1, 1 is equal to 1 over E sigma 1, 1 minus nu sigma 2, 2 minus sigma 3, 3, epsilon 2, 2 is equal to 1 over E sigma 2, 2 minus nu sigma 1, 1 minus sigma 3, 3, epsilon 3, 3 is equal to 1 over E sigma 3, 3 minus nu over E, oh, sorry, and multiplying through uh, new uh, sigma one one plus sigma two oh, sigma two two and then uh, epsilon one two is equal to one over two g sigma one two epsilon one three is equal to one over two g sigma one three and epsilon didn't draw that very nice. Epsilon 2, 3 is equal to 1 over 2G sigma 2, 3. Okay. Looking at this uh, stress state, we see that any of our stresses that contain uh, the subscript 3 go to 0. Again, my goal here was to make this as simple as possible. So that means that this is 0. This is zero. Um, it means that uh, this is zero and this is zero. And what's more, I defined the sigma one one sigma two two such that this is zero, right? Because it's minus fifty plus fifty. Okay, so that makes it a little bit easier. Uh, okay, the next I want to break in here. Is and uh, show a place that I made a mistake in the previous version of the video that I uploaded. Uh, and that, def that uh, error is in my definition of the parameters. Uh, in your textbook, the uh, bulk modulus is being defined as K. <clears throat> and it's worth pointing out that uh, going from one text to another or one uh, scientific paper to another, the way that parameters are used uh, changes. So uh, 
do be careful of it and don't make the same mistakes that I made. Uh, Young's modulus, uh, Poisson ratio, and uh, shear modulus uh, still stay the same. What does, however, change are the uh, parameters and as they are derived. So let's delete these and start again. Okay. <coughs> <clears throat> okay, so we need E nu and G. We have G is equal to minus three halves lambda minus K. We have E, so if we have K and lambda, we can get G. We have E is equal to nine K one plus plus. 3k over g. <clears throat> so now we have e, and then we can define nu as e over 2g minus 1. Okay, making the appropriate substitutions. Uh, g is equal to minus 3 halves, 25 minus 100 is equal to three halves of 75 is equal to 225 divided by two is equal to 112.5 GPA. E. is equal to uh, nine times 100 over one plus three times 100 over 112.5 is equal to 900 divided by one plus 2.67 is equal to 900 divided by 3.67 is equal to 245.2 GPA is equal to E. And the Poisson ratio is equal to 245.2 divided by 2 times 112.5 is equal, oh, minus one is equal to 245.2 divided by 225 minus one is equal to 1.0898 minus one is equal to 0 0.0898 is equal to nu. <clears throat> okay, <coughs> so then going to our solutions, the equations stay the same, but we need to make the following substitutions. This is now 245.2. Two four five point two two four five point two <clears throat> Poisson ratio is now uh, zero point zero eight nine eight zero point zero eight nine eight zero point zero eight, nine, eight, and G is one, one, two point 
five. Okay. And after substitution, these become um, minus zero point two two plus zero point two two zero <clears throat> and uh, 0 0.044. Okay, and there you have the correct solutions. Um, sorry about any confusion this might have caused. Okay, let's look at problem three. And I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail here. Uh, I think that I showed this in class because, uh, and at, at the time, I just, uh, you know, move quickly. Uh, but here I'm going to uh, show the some of the more detailed steps. Uh, you didn't need that on the exam. You could have sim simply written down the answer. But uh, writing it out, I, I think, is going to be instructive. Okay, so let's go over, let's pick a clean spot on the page. Uh, I'll go over here. No, whatever, I'll, I'll write it here, three. So we have C1111 is equal to, C11 is equal to 125 GPA, to 1122 is equal to, C12 is equal to 100 GPA, and C2323 is equal to C44 is equal to 50 GPA. Uh, and clearly, this is a cubic material. So the first step is to calculate the anisotropy. And that was just simply applying the equation C11 minus C12, which is equal to 2 times 50 divided by 125 minus 100 is equal to 100 divided by 25 is equal to 4. Okay. Let me. Again, the goal here is to make the math simple. So uh, that's the first step. And then the next step is to calculate the work for uh, applying a strain in the one one direction and then holding that constant and next applying a strain in the two two direction. So we did this in class uh, when we were uh, deriving the elastic uh, constants uh, tensor, and we, we showed that uh, this is how, <clears throat> excuse me, we showed that this is how uh, we simplify uh, some of the, uh, it's basically some of the, the, the symmetries. Uh, but let's, let's go through that in a little bit more detail. Okay, so, I gave you that the infinitesimal work is equal to the stress times the infinitesimal strain, okay? And we also know that sigma ij is equal to c ij kl, epsilon kl. 
right? So that's just Hooke's law, which means that dw is equal to c i j k l epsilon k l d epsilon i j. So what's noteworthy here is that k l appears twice and i j appears twice. That means we have a quadruple sum. Now, the good news is almost all of these are zeros. And let's see how that plays out. So the first step, this is applying Man, I want to draw, make that prettier. Epsilon 1, 1 goes from 0 to 0, 0.00. What did I say it was again? Sorry. I think it was 0 0.001. 0, 0, 001, right. 0, 0, 001. Okay. So our work infinitesimal work call this uh, goes from 0 to w1 so that's the the total work performed in this step and then that's going to be equal to integral c1111 one, 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 epsilon 1 1 d epsilon 1 1 plus the integral c 1 1 1 2 epsilon 1 2 d epsilon 1 1 plus the integral c 1 1 1 3 epsilon 1 3 d epsilon 1 1 plus dot 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 okay uh, and then we'll have others plus dot, 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 plus integral C three, 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 epsilon three, three, D epsilon three, three. So when we're integrating these, our epsilon one, one is going from zero to epsilon one, one, but all the other strains are going from zero to zero, right? Because, well, we're not applying anything, right? And if we take the integral of any of these from zero to zero, those all become zero. Okay, so that immediately gets rid of uh, two thirds of our summations. Now we're left with all the rest of these sums in the epsilon, uh, d epsilon one one. And let's write these out. We'll write out, well, two of them. We'll write out that w one is equal to the integral from zero to epsilon one one of C1111 one, 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 epsilon 11 one, one, D epsilon 11 one, one, plus the integral 0 to epsilon 11 one, C1112 one, 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 epsilon 12 D epsilon 11 one, one, plus dot 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 dot. Okay? So these terms will turn out looking like and I want to highlight here that because we have this quadruple sum, the uh, second two terms of C1111 corresponds to the first, so there and there, and the first two terms of your elastic constant correspond to 
fat in front of the uh, differential there. Okay, so let's let's write these out. We're gonna get C one 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 epsilon one one squared one half evaluated from zero to epsilon one one plus C one 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 two epsilon one two epsilon one one evaluated from zero to epsilon one one plus da 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 da, da. okay and in this sum the only term that has only epsilon one one is this term and in fact all the rest of these that's zero so that means all the rest of these terms are zero and when we apply our substitution, this gives us W1 is equal to C1111 epsilon 11 squared 1 half. So that's the first, the first term. And now we will uh, apply the second step. Step two, one constant, epsilon one one, apply epsilon two two from zero to zero point zero zero two. Okay, and you know, I didn't do so now, but if I wanted to, I could have uh, put in zero point zero zero one there and gotten a number, but we'll just do that at the end. Okay, so again, we write out the quadruple sum and we get the integral of dw from zero to w2 is equal to, well, this again. Now in this case, only the integrals d epsilon to two are non-zero, right? All zero to zero d epsilon one one and integral from zero to zero d epsilon three three so those go away and again we're left with only one third of the sums now we write out our terms and we get w2 is equal to the integral C two two one one epsilon one one d epsilon two two from zero to epsilon two two plus integral C two two one two epsilon one two d epsilon two two Zero to epsilon two two plus dot 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 plus and then we have a term in here uh, integral zero to epsilon two two c two 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 epsilon two two d epsilon two two plus dot 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 plus integral zero to epsilon three, sorry, epsilon two, two, uh, C two, two, three, three, epsilon three, three, D epsilon two, two. Okay, well, all of these terms are gonna go to zero again when you integrate them because again, they're gonna have something of 
this functional form. So again, that is zero and that is zero and all the others are zero as well. These two terms, however, are not zero and they're not zero because E11 is not zero, it's being held constant. And E22 uh, has a value now and it's what we're integrating. So that gives us W2 is equal to <clears throat> uh, C2211 epsilon 1 1 epsilon 2 2 from 0 to epsilon 2 2 plus c 2 2 2 2 epsilon 2 2 squared 1 half 0 to epsilon 2 2. And this is Uh, C2211, epsilon 1, 1, epsilon 2, 2, plus 1 half C2222, two, 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 epsilon 2, 2 squared. Okay. Now the total work is equal to W1 plus W2. And uh, as we make the substitution, we also want to recognize that uh, this is C12. This is C11, and this is C11, right? And we know that from uh, the symmetry uh, that we had in our, uh, well, in, in the in-class lecture notes. We know that 1111 and 2222 and 3333 are the same when you're in a cubic material. Uh, and that means that now we can write is equal to C11 plus, oh, not plus, C11 epsilon 1, 1 squared 1 half plus C11 epsilon 2, 2 squared 1 half plus C 1, 2 epsilon 1, 1 epsilon 2, 2. And uh, we'll make a substitution here of the actual values. So here we have, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and we're going to do this in uh, Pascal noting that our uh, units are gigapascal. So that means that we have W is equal to 125 times 10 to the 9 times 0 0.001 squared times 0 0.5 plus 125 times 10 to the 9 times 0 0.002 squared times 0 0.5 plus 100 times 10 to the 9 times 0 0.001 times 0 0.002 which is 62500 plus 
is equal to 413 kilojoule. So again, it's, if you were just solving the problem, you wouldn't have to write out the quadruple sum, but I, I thought that uh, for this problem, it would be nice to, to show all the details. And that might be something that you find find useful. So now uh, <clears throat> let's come in here and we will look at the last problem, which is comparing the uh, equation 2.11 to the stress strain equations that I showed. And I'm going to write this here. And, and basically, if you look at it, the only real difference is in, I mean, aside from notation, is in here. And the textbook is using these gammas, and I'm using uh, an epsilon, and there's a factor of one half different, right? And the origin of this has to do with the symmetrization of the uh, tensor. Uh, your textbook is using the uh, abbreviated notation, and in the abbreviated notation, you have epsilon 1, 1, epsilon uh, 2, 2, epsilon 3, 3, gamma 1, 2, gamma 1, 3, gamma 2, 3. And then you can have a uh, 6 by 6 matrix representation of the elastic constants. Uh, and instead, I'm using the uh, uh, symmetrized version, which allows us to have a true tensor relationship that can be rotated. And the reason it can be rotated is because it's symmetric. And, and by that, I mean <clears throat> that our definition Our definition, if we had our little cuboid here, and uh, we applied a strain, we get some alpha gamma is equal to tangent of alpha. That's how we started when we started our, uh, our work in elasticity. And then we applied symmetrization. And in the process of symmetrizing, we essentially moved to this. So now we've strain the material, and in this shearing, we have an equal amount of displacement from both axes. And if you look at what's happened here, you know, I've basically taken this angle and I've cut it in half. And in the process of doing that, that, that results in this factor of two difference. So uh, it's kind of a long-winded approach. I asked you to write two sentences, but uh, if you draw that picture, you'll you'll basically get the the, the right answer. So these are my solutions uh, to the exam, and you know some extra math that you might find useful someday in the future. Uh, Thank you very much.